Hello, Heron High School. Um, here we go with our fourth pedagogy video. This one's gonna be about shifting. So I wanna start with the basics of isolating a shift. So when you isolate a shift, you have to figure out what position are you starting in? What position are you ending in? For example, you could be starting in first position and ending in fifth position or starting in third position and ending in sixth position. It really depends. So your first step to isolating your shift is to figure out what position you're in. So I'm gonna start with a basic shift today, first to third. So I made a little isolating the shift diagram. First, I'm gonna practice first to third, E to G, G to E. And I'm gonna do this with my first and third fingers on the D string. shift, if you're just learning how to shift, I'm going to give you some ideas of how to make your shift more precise. The first concept is called aim and shoot. In this concept, you do not adjust your landing place of the shift. You just stick the landing, and if it's wrong, it's wrong. So I'm going to demonstrate this technique. So the first time I'm going to shift but I'm gonna to shift too high and I'm not gonna adjust. I'm just gonna be wrong and then I'll go back. So I'll go. That one was too high. So I'm gonna try again. And this time, maybe I'll be a little bit too low but I'm not gonna adjust. I'm just gonna stick the landing and go back. That one was definitely too low. This time I'm gonna try a third time, see if I can get it correct. Some ideas that I want you to think about when you're shifting is that it is a, a fast shift and that it's light. So what you do not want to do is dig a trench on the instrument when you're shifting like this. And you can even hear that. Um, or conversely, you, you don't want to hear that. You want a clean shift where it just sounds like you're going from one note to the next, like you were playing it on the piano. So, and when I'm shifting back down, I don't have to fight gravity the way I do shifting up. So I just let go of the instrument and come down. Sometimes we as string players, as violinists and violists really fight to shift back down. When all we have to do most times is just let go and let gravity do all the work for us. So after we've done the outline shift, now we're gonna to move to adding some more fingers because maybe the actual music wants you to shift from F sharp to G. So, so let's do that one. That's right, Alice. one it's F sharp to G so I'm just adding in a finger to make it more like the shift that I'm gonna see in my music now there are some studies shifting studies for violin and viola one of them is called Sevchik opus 8 and the other is called flesh scales and these are the more advanced exercises you can find Sevchik opus 8 if you look at imslp.org and those shifting exercises sound like this and then it'll go all the way up the string some of you may recognize Sevchik Opus 8 because I've written them out for you 
And then flesh scales are scales on one string. And they have various bowings for those for each scale. Um, I want to talk about another easier exercise. So those are the more advanced ones. So an easier exercise is to make a whole scale on one string with one finger at a time. This is another way you can get more comfortable with shifting. So why don't we say, uh, why don't we make a scale starting with first finger on the D string or E? So for this scale, I'm gonna go, then I'm gonna use my first finger to shift to the next note and use my fi first finger to shift again to the next note and my first finger shifts again to the next note and so on until I've done the whole scale. I'm gonna play the whole thing for you now that I've explained how to do it. So. used to getting around the instrument, you can do that with first finger, second finger, third finger, and fourth finger. So if you wanted to do an F scale, you could just with second finger. So one important thing to remember when you're doing shifting exercises is to use visual intonation. That's where you aim with your eye with a laser beam onto the fingerboard where you want your finger to go. It really helps. And um, you'd be surprised how many times you're going to nail a shift when you just look before you leap and pick out that point that you want to shift to. Uh, the last shifting exercise I'm going to leave you with is a shifting exercise similar to the one I just did, except this time we're going to shift larger distances. <laughs> is the final exercise in the easy exercise series. So in that one, we're going from one position to the next note in the scale and practicing the intervals. Now, just a couple last tips for shifting technique. So when you're playing, when you're shifting, you have to get over the bow of the instrument by bringing your elbow underneath and your thumb comes up with you and then when you go back down, your thumb has to release and come back down. So there may be other shifting techniques and exercises that you do with your teacher, and I'd like to see them in your video. And um, I'm excited to see what you do with the shifting practice this week. Okay, goodbye, Heron High School.